filing KRA returns in 2025 is very different because of the introduction of SHIF and the affordable housing levy in 2024. It also gets more complex because the new taxes are not due for relief immediately they were introduced. But don't worry, I've got you covered in this video. I have spent more than 20 hours researching how to file returns in 2025 and I assure you this is the best video you'll watch on filing returns using an Excel form all in 10 simple steps. Make sure you watch this video to the end to ensure you don't miss the most important steps regarding the new taxes. But before we start, you need to be armed with five critical pieces of information. One, your P9 form from 2024 with all your salary data. If you had more than one employer in 2024, get a P9 form from each one of them. Two, your NHIF membership number and total NHIF premiums paid from January to September 2024. Three, your total affordable housing levy paid from March to November 2024. Four, your affordable housing levy paid for the month of December 2024. And five, your SHIF deduction for the month of December 2024. You can ask your HR person for this information if they're nice or calculate this data from your pay slips. If you don't have this data with you right now, Please also continue watching to figure out how these pieces of information beautifully fit together this year. Step 1. Ensure you're logged into the KRA portal with your PIN and password. This year, iTax need to verify your phone number, so input the correct phone number and the verification code from your phone to continue. Step 2. Once you're in, click on the returns drop-down menu at the top of the screen and select File Returns. Step 3. At the Tax Obligation drop-down menu, Select the first one labeled Income Tax Resident Individual. Step 4. Download the Excel form to your computer. Then, we'll need to prepare an Excel form for use. After extracting it from the zipped folder, right-click on the document and under Security, click Unblock. Then, click OK to enable macros. If you don't have this option or you're using an older version of Excel, check the instructions on Sheet 1 of the Excel form labeled README. Also, ensure you enable editing once you open the document to access it properly. Before we move to step 5, we need to check if we have the correct Excel form. Quickly navigate to Sheet T, Tax Computation, and check if you have the following fields. Post-Retirement Medical Fund, Affordable Housing Levy, and Social Health Insurance Fund. If you do, you have the correct form and we can proceed. But if you don't, we may need to get another Excel form from the File Amended Return menu. If this is you and you don't know how to get the correct Excel form, let me know in the comments and I'll type out some instructions for you. Once we've confirmed we have the right form, we can now move to step 5. We will now fill in section A, part 1, where you will input your KRA PIN. Then, select the type of return as original if you're filing for the first time this year or amended if you're making an amendment. Then, input the return period as 1st January 2024 to 31st December 2024. Then fill in the questions on car, foreign income, mortgage appropriately. For most individuals, it's no. But for some individuals, if you are having another source of income, you need to click yes on if you have another source of income. What is different this year for all of us, if you're employed, is that we'll select yes on the life insurance policy to activate sheet L, which is a computation of insurance relief, where we will input the NHIF and AHL data that we have collected, then click next. In step 6, we'll now fill in sheet F on the employment income. First, populate the PIN of your employer from the P9 form and also key in the name. Then, check column A on your P9 form for the total gross pay. Key it in on the form and fill in zero for the rest. If you had two or more employers in 2024, add the total gross pay on the row below to account for that. If you need more rows for that, you can also click add row, just get more space to fill that in. Scroll down and click next. Then we move to step 7, filling in sheet L, computation of insurance relief. This is the most important step in filing returns in 2025 for we will use all the critical information I mentioned in the introduction of the video. We start by selecting health on the type of policy, then input NHIS PIN as it appears on your screen and the name 
is NHIF. Then input your NHIF membership number that you'll have collected before and the total NHIF premiums paid from January to September 2024. You can get this data from your payslip. Between October and November 2024, SHIF deduction was not liable for relief because that's when it was introduced. And now the Excel document will compute a 15% relief for you. Now select AHR under the type of policy and you'll notice most fields will be deactivated except the annual premium paid. Then you will input the total affordable housing levy paid from March to November 2024. From your payslip, you'll notice affordable housing levy was deducted from January. However, this period was not liable for relief. The period liable for relief is March to November 2024. So the Excel sheet will compute a 15% relief. Then you can click next. And congratulations, you have completed the trickiest part of filing returns this year. If you like this video, remember to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel. Now we move to step 8. Input the PIN and the name of your employer on sheet M, details of payee deducted. By now, on the PIN of employer, you should be having a small drop down where you can select it. On the P9 form, look for the taxable salary or chargeable pay column and key in the totals here. This is usually column H in most P9 forms. Then, for the taxable pay on taxable salary session, look for a column on your P9 form called tax charged. This is column J in most P9 forms and key in the total figures here. Then for the amount of tax deducted payee, check for the payee column on your P9 form. On some P9 forms, this is column L, but this is usually the last column on every P9 form and key in on the total amount. If you had more than one employers, you need also to do this for the other employers that you have click next. Step 9. Click next on this particular sheet labeled payment credits for we usually don't pay tax in advance. Now to the final step, step 10. Filling in sheet T which is the tax computation. Congratulations for making it this far. Time to cross our fingers and see if our returns are going to balance out to a net zero. You start with filling in the defined pension contribution. You will get this figure from column E of your P9 form. If you have three columns under section E, you need to use the figures of the actual in column E2. If you don't have this column on your P9 form, it could be simply labeled as pension or total NSSF. On the post-retirement medical fund field, capture the actual PRMF contribution or deduction for the month of December 2024 only if you contribute to this. For most of us, this is often a zero. Then we move to the affordable housing levy section and fill in the December 2024 deduction. Then on the social health insurance field, we'll also fill in the SHIF deduction for the month of December 2024. Remember, if your Excel form does not have these fields, you need to get another one. If that's the case for you, let me know in the comments below and I'll add some extra instructions. Now you can scroll down and you'll see the figure on the tax due or tax refund row. If this is a positive value, you or your employer owes KRA. If the figure is quite huge, go through the process again and see if you missed something. If it's a negative value, KRA owes you and will ask for your bank details for a refund. The ideal is to have it to zero, but if you have a range of plus or minus 10, that's usually okay. Then to the final step, click val on validate to zip the folder which will be saved in your documents on your computer. Then you need to go back to the iTax portal and under browse select the correct zip document, agree to the term, terms and conditions then click on submit. Then voila you've successfully filed your returns. Let me know in the comments below if you have been successful or encountered any challenges. Till next time, goodbye.